From the New York Times Learning Network, I'm Ross Flatt. Welcome, everyone, to A Picture Prompt is Worth a Thousand Words. Use Times Images to Build Literacy Skills. For this webinar, I'll be joined by editors Michael Goncher and Natalie Pru. And we have two goals for today's webinar. The first goal is to explore how picture prompts can inspire student writing. And the second goal is to practice writing with picture prompts in different ways. So before we dive in, I want to revisit the question we asked you as you were waiting for the webinar to start. How have you used images to inspire student writing? So let's take a look and see how some folks responded. Uh, Sylvia from Italy uses images to boost student language competence. Joan Marie is an eighth grade living environment teacher and uses pictures of processes usually as a do now for a see think wonder. Anne Marie is a high school L instructor from Ottawa, Canada and uses images to inspire oral communication. There's Kristen in Atlanta, a seventh grade ELA uh, ESOL teacher and uses images to help L's understand text and for pre-reading to build background knowledge or to start thinking about a topic. And then there's Kate, an adult ESL teacher from New Jersey who uses art to spark conversations. We had other teachers talk about using images for reflective writing or to start thinking about a topic or just inspire student writing in general. And it was just really nice to see a lot of those examples. And some of those examples we're going to be discussing a little bit today. Now, for those of you who are new to the Learning Network, I want to first talk about our approach to student writing. One of the ways we do this is through our daily writing prompts for students that are open to student comments. And tens of thousands of students from around the world comment on our site. We publish these prompts every school day for over a decade because we believe that students should write often, every day if possible, and they should do so in a low stakes way, meaning they shouldn't have to worry about conventions or a high stakes grade, spelling, things like that. They should just write for writing's sake. We also believe that students, whenever possible, should write about issues that matter to them, issues that are current, real, and relevant. We've been publishing daily writing prompts for students since 2009, and we call these our student opinion questions, which are based on a Times article and op-eds, and they're very text heavy. But in 2016, we decided to add another type of writing prompt to our daily menu of resources, and we call them picture prompts. And that's what we're gonna discuss today. Picture prompts are image-driven prompts intended to get all students writing. And we know that these prompts would be an easier way for students who struggle with reading, students who are learning English, and younger students, like middle school students. Sometimes teachers are looking for a 10-minute engaging writing activity, not a 40-minute or longer reading activity that maybe students won't have time to finish before the bell rings. Many of you mentioned that you're L teachers and you use images to inspire student writing, and that's just one of the greatest ways you can use these. So some of our picture prompts encourage creative writing, others analytical writing, but perhaps a quarter of them ask students to make an argument. So if you have students who aren't strong readers, picture prompts do just what they sound like. They use an image and a short prompt to get students writing. We have tons of topics on, on picture prompts, and we're going to be looking at those today. They can include spy cams, gender expectations, movie theaters, even Super Bowl commercials. Now, before we, I hand things off to some of the Learning Network editors to go over some of our picture prompts and have you participate in them, let's make sure we all know how to find picture prompts on the Learning Network website. So I'm going to take you through a very quick tour of our site uh, for those of you who might be a little new. So the first thing you would want to do is just navigate to the Learning Network home screen at newyorktimes.com forward slash section forward slash learning. You would scroll down. And as you scroll down, you'll then come to a bar labeled activities for students and you'll find the orange icon, which is our writing prompts. Click on that. And when you open that up, you'll see all of our writing prompts in one place, picture prompts, student opinion questions, and current events conversation. Obviously, you'll want to pick on, uh, pick on the, pick the picture prompts, and you'll see a whole list of picture prompts uh, that we've been posting this year, and it continues to go back. So what we're going to do is take a very quick look at one of our picture prompts. This one is called Flickering Sign. 
And as you can see, you'll open that up. And I just want to go over the anatomy real quick. So first, you'll see a large image, an intriguing image from somewhere in the New York Times. And then you'll see below questions to get students thinking about what they see. And a lot of those questions follow a similar format. What is this image saying? How does it relate to or comment on society or current events? Uh, other questions may follow. And then finally, uh, students, there's a link to the original article if students want to read more or if they want more context around the image. And the way we ask students to respond to these picture prompts, it's not the only way, but it's one way that we invite students 13 years and older to do this is to respond in the comments section. So you can see for flickering sign, as of today, there are 13 comments on this and students are commenting on what they think the image means. Now we have a whole list of, of, of these picture prompts. As I said, we've been publishing them since 2016 and that means we now have a library of over 500 prompts and all of them from previous school years are organized by genre of writing. So for example, right now we're looking at an image um, before, which is what do you think this image is, is saying? Um, but you can find a whole library of similar prompts in our past collections. In your resource packet, you'll find links to roundups that we have compiled from these prompts organized into four different categories. And we're gonna discuss those categories today. There's analyzing an illustration, they're sharing an experience, taking a stance on an issue, and finally, use the picture to write a story, poem, or a memoir. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand things over to Natalie Prue, one of the editors at the New York Times Learning Network, who is going to discuss analyzing an illustration with an image. Over to you, Natalie. Thanks, Ross, and hi, everyone, welcome. Um, I am going to walk you through the first type of prompt that we ask students, um, and that is to analyze an illustration. So we're going to try one of these together first. So we are gonna ask you to participate in the group chat. So please make sure you have that widget open. Um, and we're gonna do a quick write about this image right here on the right. So take a look at this image and take a moment to study it and then tell us in the group chat, what do you think this image is saying? What is its message? Um, so go ahead, think, study the image. Um, and remember, you're not being graded. So don't worry about having correct spelling, um, complete sentences. We just want to see the different ideas that you come up with. So you're doing this in the group chat. Um, and we're going to take about 30 seconds to do this. All right, I'm, I am trying to furiously write down everything you're saying. I'm seeing a lot of different comments come in. If you're still writing, go ahead and keep writing. Um, I'm just going to share out some of the things that uh, people responded. So I saw this is about an open or closed mind. Um, somebody said it's about equity. I see creativity. Um, somebody said the way that education is delivered. Uh, I see curiosity. Somebody mentioned caged emotions. Um, I see freedom of thought. I saw someone else say this is about a, children, a child's imagination um, and the freedom that you have. Uh, somebody else is saying that uh, children act on impulse and maybe adults are a little more measured in their responses. Um, and wow, these are there's so many different er interpretations that you can come up with for this one image and none of them are wrong, which is the beauty of this kind of exercise. It really gives chance kids a chance to think freely and creatively um, about what they're seeing. So I am going to show you a few comments that uh, kids shared. We asked the same prompt on our site, um, just so you can get an idea of what they say and you know how they write in response to these prompts. So these are comments that they posted on our site. 
So the first one is from Haley from Freehold, New Jersey. She said, I think this picture is re representing the creativity and endless possibilities people imagine and seek when they are children as opposed to adults. And Brooke from King of Prussia said, I believe this illustration was about how a child's mind is free and simple because they do not have much worry. This compared to the adult's mind, which is complex and caged because they have worry and responsibility. And then this last one from Xander who says, I think this image is a representation of how we mature throughout our lives. The little boy on the left has his bird cage doors open and many birds flying all around him. This is the mind of a young child, ready to be molded and shaped by many people. The image on the left is that of a mature adult. His cage doors are closed and there are a few birds inside of it. Those birds represent things like the people that have influence over him and his ideals. He isn't willing to let others affect him, so he has closed off his mind and only listens to a few. So again, you can see just like all the different interpretations you guys came up with, kids do the same thing um, in this type of writing exercise. Um, and just to reiterate, uh, if you don't know much about our site, we do allow comments on our site for students who are 13 years old and older. Um, but if you're a teacher or a parent of a student younger than 13, you can make an account and you can post their comments on their behalf. Um, and you might just sign their comment with their name and grade so that we know that it's from a student, um, but it has to come from your account if they're under 13. So I'm going to show you just a few more examples of these types of prompts that we ask. So here's another one that we asked a while ago about falling bottles. Um, we asked them, what do you think this image is saying? And then we often ask them to connect it to either the world around them or their own lives. So we ask them, how does this comment on our society or our world today? And then we invite them to weigh in on with their opinion of its message. And here's another example called binoculars. We said, what do you think this image is saying? And we asked them, can you relate to it personally in any way? So again, these types of prompts are great for practicing inferences um, and citing evidence. As you see, saw in the students' comments, they cited all kinds of different evidence from the image. Um, and for making those different kinds of text connections, text to world, text to text, uh, text to self, um, these are all great options for that. So now I'm going to hand it off to Michael, the editor of the Learning Network, to share with you another type of prompt that we ask. Hi, uh, this is Michael Goncher. Thank you, Natalie. So Natalie spoke about analytical writing, and I'm going to speak about how we use our picture prompts to help kids share about their own personal experiences. So I'll give you an example of one of these, and I'll ask you to participate just like you did a few minutes ago. I want you to take a look at the image on the right, and in the group chat, take a minute to respond to the following questions. Is there a notable cook in your extended family? And if so, what are his or her best dishes in your opinion? And so please go ahead. I'll give you about 30 seconds again to share in the chat about a notable cook in your family, and perhaps it's you or perhaps someone else. And what are his or her best dishes? So like Natalie, I'm having a difficult time keeping up with all of the wonderful, yummy things that you're sharing. Uh, this is what happens when you would have a class of hundreds hundreds of students. Um, but I'm seeing things like people sharing their grandmother's uh, beef jerky or chocolate cake. Uh, someone was talking about banana pancakes and schmaltz. Uh, my uncle's steak, a big batch of soup from the garden vegetables. Someone shared also about lasagna. And yes, I'm seeing someone else say, it's making me hungry. It's making me hungry as well. So you can imagine if you ask this question of your students, what they might say, and you might get a really interesting mix of responses from students. We asked this question on the, on the Learning Network, and we based it actually on an article I think was related to a, a grandmother of a baseball player who, who does lots of cooking that the base, professional baseball players love. So 
Here's an example of what one student said, uh, Avery from uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. My grandma makes people food, the food that keeps you sitting at the dining room table or in the kitchen enjoying each other's company. The smell of sweet rolls wafts from the oven while the pecan pie cools on the stove top. Just the thought of the butter beans and sweet creamed corn makes my mouth water. Mashed potatoes waiting in a pool of gravy with crispy fried chicken on the side is sure to fill me up. So we have lots of kids share their ideas, share their writing. They get a chance to play with showing and not just telling, to bring in those five senses and to bring in those sensory details. So that's one example of the type of personal writing that we've asked kids to do on the Learning Network. Here's another one. We asked students to write about journeys that they've taken. Do they like to explore? And maybe what's the most interesting, exciting, or memorable journey you've ever taken on foot, by bike, in a car, or via boat or train? This prompt reminds me of a time before now, uh, before so many of us are uh, locked inside our homes or quarantined uh, within just a mile of our homes. Here's another one. Uh, about names, and and if if you've, uh, it's possible you've used names as a prompt in your own class. In this prompt, we ask students, "What is your name, and how did you get it? Have you ever altered or changed your name for any reason? Has anyone else, for instance, maybe you go by a nickname more often than the name on your birth certificate? And which of the names you are called do you like best, and why?" So that's an example of some of the personal writing prompts that we've uh, that we've asked on in our picture prompt feature on the learning network let me hand it back to you natalie and you can share a different type of prompt thanks michael um so a third type of prompt that we offer is we invite students to take a stance on an issue so again we are going to try one together um, here is the image on the right that you're responding to and here's the prompt do you think it's a good idea for parents to use smart devices like spy cameras, location tracking devices, or other alert systems to keep tabs on their children when they're home alone? Why or why not? So if you can take 30 seconds to respond in the chat, and again, you don't need to write a whole novel, just a sentence or two will do for this one. Okay, thanks so much for sharing, everyone. Again, tons of amazing responses. So I just want to share a few that I saw. Um, somebody said, why not? <laughs> Another person said, no, they're at home, um, which especially is true right now. Um, we're, you're probably home with your kids all the time, so maybe this isn't as relevant. Um, others said that it depends on the age. Um, somebody said, no, because it deters self-reliance. Um, somebody else said that, yes, surveillance can save a life. Um, and then somebody else looked at it with a little more nuance, said maybe to help, but not to substitute a trusting relationship, um, which are all amazing answers. Um, and again, we asked this uh, prompt to students, so we're going to look at a couple of their responses. So William from Ho Chi Minh City said, that if children find out that parents are tracking them with a spy cam, it's just going to make the relationship between the parents and child worse. Um, Emily said, I think it all depends on how responsible your child is. If your child is always getting into trouble and staying out late, if you don't know where they are, then I think it's reasonable enough to put a tracker on their phone. And finally, Dominic said, I do not believe that kids should be watched over with spy cams. I feel as though us kids should be able to make mistakes and then learn from them on our own. Um, so you'll see, again, a range of responses, just like all of you had. Um, and I'm not sure if you notice this, if you can see it on your screen, but you'll see that they don't have perfect spelling um, or grammar, and that's okay. We see these writing prompts as sort of a rehearsal space for practicing argumentative writing skills. Um, so when we get comments on our site, we never expect them to be perfectly written or these um, long essays. We really just want 
to give kids a space to voice their opinions um, and start practicing those argumentative writing skills, which you'll see that the students did here. Um, here are a few more argumentative writing prompts. So another one we asked recently, we asked students to weigh in on the relevance of malls in the era of online shopping. Um, and this was from a few years ago. We asked if student, we asked students if they thought break dancing should be an Olympic event. Um, and what about other kinds of dance and um, what other sporting events they, they would want to see featured in the Olympics and why. Um, and so again, these prompts are a great place for students to share their opinions about things that interest them um, and to practice argument, argumentative writing in a low stakes environment. And now I'm going to hand it back to Michael one more time to tell you the last exercise. Thank you, Natalie. It's, it's fun to play tag team with you on this webinar. So the last type of prompt that we're gonna to discuss today of these four categories of picture prompts is when we ask students to do some, to use their creativity, to write a story, write a poem or a memoir. And so let me give you an example of what that can look like. Now, the other images that we've showed you on this, uh, in this webinar so far have generally been from before the whole pandemic that has taken over so many of our lives. Uh, this image though was very recent. And so we asked uh, to do a quick write, what story could this image tell? And we asked them to use their imagination to write the opening line of a short story, poem or memoir inspired by the illustration. And what I'm, I'm gonna ask you to do is to do the same thing. So of course you don't have time to write a whole poem or a whole story in the chat, but if you could use the group chat to write the opening line of a longer story or the opening line of a poem, I'll give you about 30 seconds to write, write and then we'll share some of what you share with us. So there, there were lots of fun ideas there, and it was difficult for me to keep up with them. Someone said, trapped on an island of toilet paper. And someone else wrote, uh, surrounded by alien forces, I miss work. Some other people had some beginnings, like uh, once upon a time there was a dog and a boy. And someone else wrote, I don't check the weather anymore. So, uh, and I couldn't keep with all of them. I wish I had more time and, and, uh, and my eyes were faster to be able to scan the, ch the, the chat box. But thank you for sharing. What I'd like to share with you is what some students wrote on our site. So here is what uh, Saharsh from a school in Tennessee wrote. I, I sit uncertainly in my chair, looking out the window. Buddy feels it too. When will the virus go? I surf the web for memes, sequestered and despaired. What use was the toilet paper? It piled up. It was I was unprepared. Buddy, too, is desolate. He doesn't play with his toys. So like a philosopher, how I long, long for day joy. And here's what Xiao Yi wrote from San Francisco. Uh, I won't read the whole piece, but you'll, you'll get a sense of the creativity. I'm going to write the introductory narration to season 2020, episode four of Earth an alien TV show I made up, a drama series about the humans of Earth. The narrator's an alien doctor, Dr. Lar Lumos. Hope you like it. Translated from Xenolith, language of the aliens. It's not the same anymore. Millions of humans are staying in their homes. The streets are lonely. The malls are lonely. The schools are lonely. The parks are lonely. And the toilet paper racks are lonely. Sequestered in their homes, humans have gone wild, especially small ones. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. But you can get a sense of the creativity that uh, that students can find in these prompts and the fun that they can have just from one image. So here's another example of a prompt that we asked uh, to, to stir students' creativity. And this one I think is special because that photograph was actually taken by one of the winning students of our photography contest in the fall. We, we run contests all year long for students, 10 contests during the school year. One of the contests we run is a photography contest. And this is one that a student took, Catherine McCarthy. And so we asked students to respond to this image. 
Tell us about a memory from your own life that this image makes you think of, or use your imagination to write the opening of a short story or poem inspired by what you see. And here's one more, an illustration that we took from the Times. And we asked, what story could this image tell? And uh, we, we prompted the students to use their imagination, again, like the one we did, to write the opening of a short story or poem inspired by this illustration. So I'm going to hand it back to the team to talk about using picture props. Thanks, Michael, me again. Um, so I'm going to give you a few ideas of different ways that you can use picture prompts. These are ideas that we've gathered um, as learning network staff, um, but also from teachers over the years who have used these picture prompts. And I've been noticing in the chat throughout this whole presentation that people are putting ideas for how they would use these in their own classrooms for how you use images, and those are great. So thank you so much for sharing those. Um, so one way that you can use these picture prompts is your, in your class is to embed it into your classroom or now remote learning routine um, as a daily or weekly writing practice. Um, so sometimes teachers ask their students to go onto our site and respond to a prompt of their choice um, from the week, or maybe they do it every day. Um, so one option is to get that kind of regular practice so they can practice these different types of writing that we're asking them to do, too. Another way that you can use these in your classroom is to practice making inferences and thinking critically and citing evidence. Um, particularly those image analysis prompts, those are great for these skills, um, but really any of our images can work for you know, noticing details, drawing conclusions um, from an image. And third, these are great for sparking discussions and debates. You can, of course, do this in a classroom, but many of us are not in classrooms now, we know. Um, so it's a, it's a great way to have online digital discussions, too, is to use one of these images to get kids um, talking to each other online. And a fourth way is to activate schema before reading a related article. I think that somebody said that they use this type of skill with English language learners, um, which we, we think is a great idea. Um, it's great for English language learners, for struggling readers. Um, as a warm up, you might have students look at the image and um, talk about what they see and what they notice. And then the article is always linked at the bottom of the picture prompt, so they can click on that and read the article. And then finally, you can create a bank of images from our stream of hundreds of prompts um, for any other activities. And this is where you can let your imagination run wild. The possibilities are endless. Like I said, I've seen a bunch in the comments already. Um, but I'll just give you a few examples of how other teachers have used them. So a second grade music teacher told us that she uses these images to inspire her students to make stories using musical instruments um, based on what they see in the image. Um, and then another high school English teacher told us that he uses them for a matching game where students match an image from our picture prompts uh, to a book that they're reading. And then they explain the connection there. So those are just a couple of ideas. They are linked in the lesson plans that we provided in your um, resources doc. So you can look for them there. And sort of to wrap up today, we have given you a lot of information about our picture prompts. Um, but we'd love to know if you could see yourself using this feature with your students and how. So again, if you can use the chat box, take a minute to respond which of these picture prompts that you saw today might you use with your students, if any, and how do you see yourself using them with your students? Go ahead, take about 30 seconds to write in the chat box what you think. So again, I'm seeing so many comments, it's hard to keep up with them, but um, I'm just gonna read out a few responses that people mentioned. Um, one person said they would use them uh, with English language learners to practice vocab. Yes, another great example. Um, 
a lot of people mentioned the coronavirus prompt and how they would use that in their classroom. Um, if you go to our stream right now, you'll see our most recent prompt. Picture prompts are all coronavirus related because that's what's happening in the news right now. Um, if you don't feel, if your kids don't feel like talking about the coronavirus, again, they can go through our stream of hundreds of prompts and respond to older prompts too. We approve comments for those as well. Um, I saw somebody else that they love the idea of using it as a rehearsal space for practicing different kinds of writing. Um, somebody else mentioned um, SEL, social emotional learning check-ins, um, giving students a place to you know talk about their the news and their emotional reactions to it, which you know is probably especially important right now with um, you know how stressful things are. Um, so thank you so much for sharing those. I am going to hand it off to Ross now to close us out um, and answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much, Natalie. Okay, so for those of you who are new to the Learning Network and are excited to explore, obviously take a look at the resource page that we shared with you and all of the other resource links. We offer many daily and weekly free learning activities for students, all of them based on New York Times content. So today we talked about uh, picture prompts, but we also have what's going on in this picture and what's going on in this graph. We have student opinion questions, current events, lesson of the day. We have a film club, a weekly news quiz, country of the week, words of the day. We have contests all year long, and we even have a free writing curriculum and lesson plans for teachers. So this is a wonderful resource to use in your classroom in general. And I think in a lot of ways, this is a really good resource to use, especially right now um, in, in the kind of era that we're all that, that we're all uh, dealing with. So finally, for those of you uh, who want to learn more about the Learning Network and haven't signed up for our weekly emails, if you go to our home page, you will scroll down and you can sign up for weekly emails and get a newsletter. It's how you can find out more about our contests, our webinars, and any other features that are coming out. So again, on behalf of the Learning Network, uh, from Rachel, Natalie, and Michael, and the rest of the team. We thank you very much for joining us, and we hope to see you next week. Take care.